Hey, welcome to Mob Academy, where I'm helping you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today we're going to talk about how to animate text counting up and down between two numbers. Kind of like this. All right, so the only thing I've got here in my scene already is the canvas, a black background, a button, and an input field, and this text that we're actually going to animate. So the input field will type in something, click the button, and it'll update this text, and we'll count from whatever number it's at to the next number. So we'll create a new script called number counter, and we'll also create one called number counter updater. And that one will just be the one that handles the input field and the button click. The number counter is going to be the primary thing we're using. So we'll come in here, delete everything that Unity gives us by default almost with any mono behavior, and we'll start with the reference to the text that we want to update. We'll call that text mesh pro UGUI text. Then we'll add the require component type of text mesh pro UGUI. Private void awake text equals get component text mesh pro UGUI. And that'll just auto assign text for us so we don't have to do it in the inspector. Next up, we'll add the count FPS. So we're going to count or change the text every 1 30th of a second we'll choose for now. We'll make it 30. You can change it to anything you want in the inspector. We'll add a duration. We add in the ability that we can change how long it should take for this text to animate from one number to the next. Now we'll add the backing value, private int underscore value, and the, and the auto property, public int value where we'll define the get and set functions here. The get will be simple, return the backing property. The set is also pretty simple. We're going to set the underscore value to be the value. But before we do that, we want to call our function update text. This is going to kick off the animation for us. So anytime that the public int value is changed, we will update the text mesh pro text in an animated fashion to be the, the new value. So we'll go ahead and define that private void update text with the new value as the argument. And we'll start a coroutine that we'll call count text, which will also accept the new value. Since we are kicking off a coroutine to make sure there's not multiple of them running at the same time, what we're going to do is define a private coroutine counting coroutine and assign that to what start coroutine returns. And we'll just check that counting coroutine is, if it's not null, what we want to do is stop it and then start the new one. So that way we don't have multiple trying to update the text mesh pro object at the same time. So let's define the count text coroutine, private I enumerator count text into new value argument that we take in. And here we'll define the wait for seconds. And we'll define that as one divided by the count FPS. And we will yield return this weight as we're counting up or down the text. Next thing we'll do is cache the initial value of when this coroutine starts to be the underscore value. Remember that we kick off the coroutine of update text with the new value. And the old underscore value is still whatever the previous value was. But since we're executing this over time, underscore value will change on the second pass of this function. So we'll just cache it here as previous value. Then we'll calculate the step amount. So based on the previous value, so if new value minus previous value is less than zero, we're going to use mathf floor to int, new value minus previous value divided by count FPS times duration. And the reason we want to do this is let's take an example. Uh, if we have new value as negative um, 20 and the previous value is 0, count FPS is 30 and duration is 1, that ends up giving us, without the floor to int part, a negative 0 0.666667, right? Which if we used seal to int, which we'll talk about in a second, that would give us 0, right? Negative 0 0.6667 seal to int would give 0 because that's an next highest integer value, and then our coroutine would run forever. So in this case, we want floor to int to go down, and on the case where 
previous value, sorry, where the difference of them is greater than zero, we want to use seal to int. So we'll copy paste this whole thing. And the only thing we're changing is floor to int to seal to int. So now we'll check again, previous value is less than new value. Then we're going to iterate until previous value is greater than or equal to new value. So if previous value is less than new value. While it is, we will do this loop where we add step amount to previous value. We clamp previous value to the new value to make sure that we don't go over. Since we're using an approximate step amount, it's not necessarily always going to be exact in case uh, whatever number we're counting to is not divisible by our count FPS. We want to just make sure we end on the correct value. Then we will text set text to be the new value to string sorry, previous value to string with a number format. And we want to use a number format because if your numbers are in the thousands, You'd like to probably see a comma there that's more useful. So if we take 9999, for example, uh, just displaying 9999 doesn't look very good to your end users. So we most likely want to put a comma there to differentiate the thousands from the hundreds. And that's where the number format comes in. So if I pull up the C sharp number format documentation, the standard numeric format strings, where we scroll down a little bit, N is for number. And on the right side over here, you see that it'll give us the commas and decimals. Since we're using integers, we actually want to provide zero. We don't want any decimals. Uh, if you decide that you want to use floats instead of this integer value, uh, you would just define here the number of decimals that you'd like to see. So we'll do ourselves a favor, put public string number format n0 here at the top. So default is n0, and we'll use the number format here so we can change it in the future uh, or on a script by script basis. After we set the text, we will yield return wait, and that's where we get the animated look where the numbers will briefly be displayed at each step until they hit the max value. And in the opposite case of previous value is greater than new value, it's the exact same thing. Actually, we're just flipping the signs of everything to make sure that we clamp to the correct value and that we loop to the correct value. So while previous value is greater than new value, and then we just make sure that we've never gone below the new value. It looks like it'll work. To make sure this video stays on topic, I just want to show what the number counter updater does. It just will assign the number counter value to whatever we put into the input field. I'm going to hook that up really quickly in the inspector, and then let's take a look at how it works together. Click play, and let's start with 500. There it goes from 0 to 500, negative 500. Also great. Let's put something like negative 5,000, so we see that number format coming into play with the comma. We put something small. It does not take the full duration like I was talking about earlier. It just counts five iterations, so five thirtieths of a second. If we put a gigantic number, again, commas, come in and it takes the second. If we put a negative ridiculous number, it's too big for my text area. There we go. We change the duration to something like 2.5 seconds. It takes much longer and still reaches our destination. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If you use it in a project, if you have any questions, or if you have a different topic you'd like me to cover, leave a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.